good morning so today i'll be taking <coughs> the second part of module 6 for uh, ce 206 fluid mechanics 2 course uh, and it will be on model analysis uh, we have already done the part 1 of this lecture uh, which was uh, on dimensional analysis this is part 2 and here we are going to discuss about model analysis so first uh, before we uh, start discussing in detail about model analysis uh, you should be able to understand the difference between a model and a prototype so for predicting the performance of hydraulic structures hydraulic structures means your structures like dams or spillways or your hydraulic machines like turbines or pumps before actually constructing or manufacturing these items uh, we build models of these structures that is we build a small replica of these structures and then you run a lot of tests on these models and study the model before actually constructing the uh, actual structure so that is what is basically model analysis that is before actually building any structure we will build models or small scale replicas of uh, these structures run tests on them and then uh we will uh analyze the behavior of the structure and then make or modify it accordingly uh so that you can uh, ultimately get a very good structure so what is model and prototype model is a small scale replica of the actual structure or the machine and a prototype is the actual structure or machine so from now on i am not going to talk or i am not going to say actual structure actual structure again and again i'll be using the word prototype instead of the actual structure so a model is based on or a small scale replica of a prototype so what are the advantages of model analysis or why do we have to do model analysis the first one is that uh, usually hydraulic structures are extremely uh, high cost and uh, <coughs> extremely large scale structures and so there should be some study that should be conducted before actually moving ahead to constructing the structure so if we build a model and if we study the model then the performance of the hydraulic structure can be easily predicted from its model now when i'm talking about model the first thing that comes to your mind is a small scale uh, actual replica Uh, made uh, on that structure uh, but however model can also be computerized model that is computer models where you model inside a uh, software advanced softwares that are available uh, allow you to model inside the um, computer itself so models are actually small scale replicas of the hydraulic structures and so they'll help you predict the performance of the actual structure that is one of the advantages of model analysis another advantage of model analysis is that alternative designs that is uh, when you are talking about a hydraulic structure there will be uh, three or four options in front of you in which you will be able to design the structure so you can actually compare the designs by using models and then ultimately or finally you can select an economic and safe design for your uh, hydraulic structure so these are the advantages of model analysis now before studying about model analysis we have to study about similitude or the types of similarities that should exist between the model and the prototype so when you are building a model of the prototype the only consideration should not be the geometry that is uh, you should not uh, think that model is simply a scaled down version of a prototype but there are a lot of other elements uh, as far as a model is concerned and so we'll be studying about similarities so similitude is defined as the similarity between the model and the prototype and there are three types of similarities that uh, have to be considered while you are building a model of a prototype geometric similarity kinematic similarity and dynamic similarity so we'll discuss each one of them in detail geometric similarity is the similarity between the linear dimensions that is the ratio of the linear dimensions of the model to the corresponding linear dimensions of the prototype should be equal that is suppose lp 
BP and DP are the length, breadth and depth of the prototype and LM, BM and DM are the length, breadth and depth of the model. When you are talking about a geometrically similar model, then LP by LM equal to BP by BM equal to DP by DM equal to LR. That is the ratios of the corresponding lengths, the corresponding breadths and the corresponding depths of the prototype and model should be equal and they should be equal to a value equal to LR which is uh, known as the length scale ratio. So just scale down the dimensions. Uh, the length, breadth and depth of the prototype. Now using this I can also scale down other uh, linear dimensions like area and volume. So if AP and VP are the area and volume of the prototype and AM and VM are the area and volume of the model respectively then AP by AM that is the ratio of the uh, cross-sectional area of the prototype to the cross-sectional area of the model will be given by LP into BP divided by LM into BM which is naturally LP by LM into BP by BM, so LR into LR. So, ratio of areas would become LR squared. And similarly, the ratio of volumes would be LR cube. That is, if you scale down your dimensions equally, then the areas would be scaled down by a factor equal to LR squared. And the volumes would be scaled down by a factor equal to LR cube. Next type of similarity that we, had, we have to discuss is kinematic similarity. So when we are talking about kinematic similarity, kinematic similarity is the similarity of motion between the model and the prototype. So most probably it can be that the structures that you are considering are a moving structure. For example, ships, if you consider, uh, ships are moving structures. And so there should be a kinematic similarity between the model and the prototype. And kinematic similarity uh, a similarity of motion can be discussed as follows. Let VP1 and VP2 be the velocities at two points in a prototype and the corresponding velocities in a model, let it be VM1 and VM2. So, you have made a model out of a prototype and VP1 and VP2 are the velocities of the fluid at points 1 and 2 in the prototype and VM1 and VM2 are the velocities at the corresponding points in the model. Then if the model is kinematically similar to its prototype, VP1 by VM1 will be equal to VP2 by VM2 which is equal to VR or the velocity scale ratio. That is the velocities would be scaled down correctly at all the points. That is what is meant by kinematically similar. Now not just velocities, accelerations also. <coughs> Acceleration also is concerned with the motion of the body. So if AP1 and AP2 are the accelerations of the fluid at points 1 and 2, and AM1 and AM2 are the accelerations of the fluids at uh, uh, 1 and 2 in the model, then the ratios of the accelerations AP1 by AM1 should be equal to AP2 by AM2 equal to AR, which is the acceleration scale ratio. <coughs> so this is what is meant by kinematic similarity. FIP by FIM is equal to FVP by FVM is equal to FGP by FGM is equal to FR or the four scale ratio. Uh, that is what is meant by uh, the dynamic similarity between model and prototype. The ratio of the forces, corresponding forces at the prototype and the model are the same. The ratio is this. So, next we move on to discussion about dimensionless numbers. <coughs> so when we are talking about dimensionless numbers, uh, the reason why we will be discussing dimensionless numbers you will be understanding in a little while. But you should understand this for the time being that dimensionless numbers are of great importance in model analysis. And there are five dimensional numbers that we will be discussing about. They are the Reynolds number given by inertia force divided by viscous force. The fruit number given by square root of inertia force by gravitational force. Euler's number given by square root of inertia force by pressure force. And finally, Weber's number given by square root of inertia force by surface tension force. Uh, sorry, one more dimensionless number is there. Mach number given by square root of 
inertia force by elastic force so these are the five different dimensionless numbers you, will, you can look carefully at the formula that i have written down corresponding to each dimensionless number except for reynolds number every other number is under a root sign and the numerator is always inertia force when it's reynolds number the denominator is viscous force when it's fruit number the denominator is gravitational force when it's euler's number the denominator is pressure force when it's weber's number the denominator is surface tension force and when it's mac number the denominator is elastic force so we'll be discussing each of these uh, numbers in detail reynolds number is given by inertia force by viscous force so i have abbreviated it as fi divided by fv <coughs> now inertia force is given by mass into acceleration i told you that inertia force is the resultant force and it is given by mass into acceleration so <coughs> mass is given by density into volume and acceleration is given by velocity into time so inertia force can be written as volume by time can become discharge so density into discharge into velocity and thus inertia force is equal to rho into a into v into v which is rho a v squared now the similar calculation we have done in module 1 while we were discussing the force act upon uh, a plate by a jet moving jet or a stationary plate by a moving jet when it strikes uh, we have discussed this formula for inertia force uh, rho into a into v squared so i hope this is not new to you so inertia force is rho into a into v squared now we'll uh, check the expression for viscous force viscous force is shear stress into area because this viscous force is creating the shear stress inside the fluid so shear stress into area and you might remember the formula for shear stress in a fluid to be given by mu into du by dy we have studied uh, newton's law of viscosity the shear stress acting in a fluid is given by mu into du by dy which is where mu is the coefficient of dynamic viscosity into area will give you the viscous force now i am um, going to be i'm not uh, this is not exact mathematics i'm going to do a small dimensional analysis here du by dy i'm going to replace it by v divided by l because du has dimensions of velocity and dy has dimensions of l so uh, in order to find out the expression for reynolds number i uh, only require the dimensional value of the viscous force so mu into v by l into a so now that I got the expressions for inertia force and viscous force, I can find out the mathematical expression for Reynolds number. Reynolds number is given by Fi by Fv, that is rho A V squared divided by mu into V by L into A. Cancelling out the common terms, I will get rho V L divided by mu. That is Reynolds number. Fruit number is given by root of inertia force by gravitational force square root of fi by fg the formula for inertia force has already been discussed while we were deriving reynolds number so i'm not going to derive it again but i'm going to write fi is equal to rho into a into v square directly gravitational force as you know is the weight of a body and so it is mass into acceleration due to gravity mass is density into volume so rho into v into gravity would be uh, fg now volume i can replace it by area into length into acceleration due to gravity rho into area into length into acceleration due to gravity will be fg substituting these values in the expression for fruit number i will get square root of fi by fg that is square root of rho a v square divided by rho a l into g or fruit number uh, would be v by root of lg this is the expression for fruit number that I've got or I will be considering when I'm doing model analysis. Now, uh, you have already worked out uh, fruit number when you were studying module 4. Uh, if ex, uh, if we have expressed fruit number as velocity divided by root of g y where y was the depth. Now, here you would understand that we are not actually differentiating between length, breadth and depth as such. Only thing that we are considering is that it is a linear dimension and so we will write it as L. Similarly, as we considered in Reynolds number, uh, when it's a linear dimension, I'm going to express it as L, no matter whether it's depth, breadth or uh, the length. So, fruit number, I've got the expression as V divided by root of LG. Now, we'll move on. Euler's number 
the expression for Euler's number was square root of inertia force by pressure force, which was square root of Fi divided by Fp. Now, inertia force, like we all know, is rho into A into V squared. Now, pressure force is pressure into area. So, P into A. So, as simple as that, there is no more uh, expansion of this force. So, directly we can find out Euler's force to be square root of Fi by Fp. That is square root of rho A V squared divided by P into A. A gets cancelled off and you will get Euler's number to be equal to V by square root of P by rho. This is Euler's number, a simple formula for you, straightforward formula. Next, we move to Weber's number. In Weber's number, Weber's number is given by square root of inertia force divided by surface tension force, which is equal to square root of Fi divided by Fs. Now, Fi is rho AV squared, we have already determined that. Surface tension force is given by surface tension per unit length into length because surface tension is something that acts along the length surface tension force is given by surface tension per unit length into the actual length so that would be sigma into l and uh, substituting these things in weber's number we will get weber's number is equal to square root of inertia force divided by surface tension force root of fi by fs that is equal to square root of rho a v squared by sigma l now, here you can see that I have substituted A with L squared. I know that A might not be actually L squared. A can be some dimension B into L or D into L or anything like that. But I am only considering the dimensional aspect of area, which is uh, square of uh, length, would give me the uh, dimensional aspect of area. So, I am simply substituting area with L squared. Um, and I would cancel off L and I would end up by... Uh, getting Weber's number is equal to V divided by square root of sigma divided by rho into L. And the final dimensionless number is Mach number. Mach number is given by square root of inertia force divided by elastic force, which is equal to square root of Fi by Fe. Now, inertia force is given by rho into A into V squared. And elastic force is given by elastic stress into area. We are simply going to write it as K into area. Now, area, I am going to again replace it with L squared because uh, I would want to cancel off. Uh, now, Mach number is given by uh, inertia force divided by elastic force. So, rho AV squared divided by K L squared. Area is again L squared. So, cancelling of area, I would get V divided by root of K by rho to be the Mach number. Now, this <coughs> actually should have ended here, but there is an interesting fact over here. <coughs> and that is that square root of k by rho is the velocity of sound in a fluid. And it, is, uh, it goes by the uh, variable or it goes by the constant c. That is root of k by rho is velocity of sound c. And so I can simply replace root of k by rho as c and Mach number would become v by c. This is just for your general knowledge. Uh, you could keep that in mind. So we have discussed the five dimensionless numbers. Now I'll explain why these dimensional num uh, dimensionless numbers are important in model analysis. We'll discuss about something that is known as model laws. So if we wish to have dynamic similarity between the model and the prototype, the force ratio of all the forces acting on them should be equal. That is, if on a body, if on a structure, uh, viscous force is acting, gravitational force is acting, uh, pressure force is acting, elastic force is acting. So, in order to model it perfectly, all these forces need to be scaled down equally. But that is a very, very difficult thing to do. Okay, this means the ratio of viscous forces, gravitational forces, pressure forces, etc. should be equal between the model and prototype. Now, the problem is that you try to actually bring one force uh, ratio to be uh, equal to another force ratio, the other force ratio goes wrong. So, it is very difficult to actually model down all the forces acting on a body equally. It's a very difficult thing to do and it's a very difficult thing to achieve. So, if you are trying to achieve dynamic similarity between model and prototype, uh, it's actually a lost cause or it's a very difficult thing to scale down all the force ratios the uh, to make the viscous forces proportional to make the gravitational forces proportional to make the pressure forces proportional and the ratios to be made equal is a very difficult thing to do so <coughs> what we are going to do is we're not going to do that because it's going to be very difficult 
we will model for the predominant force in the prototype that is out of all the forces acting on the prototype one force would be a predominant force that is the major force so when we are making a model we will neglect all the other forces and concentrate <coughs> only on the predominant force in the prototype so uh, for example if gravitational force is the predominant force in the structure we will only scale down the gravitational force in the model and we will not consider the other forces acting on the prototype uh, and we will not scale it down in the model or we will not give it any importance so we will uh, make the ratio of gravitational forces equal to the ratio of the net forces acting on the model and that is how you are going to model the uh, replica if you want to achieve dynamic similarity uh, between the model and the prototype we will only scale down the predominant force and that is how we are going to move ahead now there are different model laws available in order to do this okay so we'll be discussing two different model laws today basically reynolds model law and fruit model law okay so we'll start with reynolds model law reynolds model law if viscous force is the predominant force in the prototype then we use reynolds model law now why do we use reynolds model law i'll explain so here we know that if viscous force is the predominant force in the prototype then the force ratios f inertia inertial force in the prototype divided by fi in the model should be equal to fv in the prototype divided by fv in the model that is force scale ratio that we have studied now what i'm going to do is i'm going to rearrange this uh, uh, equation so here i've taken um, i've cross multiplied fip divided by fvp is equal to fim divided by fvm that is inertia force of the prototype divided by viscous force of the prototype equal to inertia force of the model divided by viscous force of the model now if you look here what do you think is inertia force divided by viscous force we have just studied it inertia force divided by viscous force is nothing but the reynolds number and so we end up getting reynolds number of the prototype should be equal to reynolds number of the model that is if you are building a model based on viscous force as the predominant force then you just have to make sure that the reynolds number of the prototype is equal to the reynolds number of the model and you will have dynamic similarity to be your dynamic similarity will be achieved between your model and the prototype so this concept that reynolds number of the prototype should be equal to reynolds number of the model is known as reynolds model law and we are going to model based on reynolds model law so if i am going to expand it further reynolds number i know is rho v l by mu so reynolds number of prototype is rho p into v p into l p divided by mu p and reynolds number of model is rho m into v m into l m divided by mu m <coughs> so now i'll uh, bring the uh, <coughs> prototype divided by model i'll bring all the terms to one side to achieve the fraction prototype divided by model so here rho p v p l p into mu m divided by rho m v m l m into mu p equal to 1 because i brought all the terms to one side rho p by rho m is uh, density scale ratio rho r v p by v m is v r lp by lm is lr and mu p by mu m is mu r so i will get rho r vr lr by mu r is equal to 1 this is the equation that i get for reynolds model law where rho r is the density scale ratio vr is the velocity scale ratio and lr is the length scale ratio mu r is the viscosity scale ratio between the model and so now what we are going to do is we are going to find out the other scale ratios that is based on reynolds model law we are going to find out other scale ratios time scale ratio if i am talking about uh, time scale ratio time is given by length by velocity so time scale ratio would be lr divided by vr acceleration scale ratio ar acceleration is given by velocity by time so ar would be vr divided by tr now tr we already know is equal to lr by vr so 
uh, I'll end up getting acceleration scale ratio AR is equal to VR squared by LR. Force scale ratio between the model and the prototype that has been uh, done based on Reynolds model law. Force scale ratio is equal to MR into AR mass into acceleration. Now, um, MR is density into volume, so rho R into VR. AR is given by VR squared divided by LR that we have already found out. And so we will get uh, volume can be replaced with LR cube. VR can be replaced with LR cube. And so I am going to get rho R LR cube VR squared divided by LR which is rho R LR squared into VR squared. Discharge scale ratio, if I am taking the discharge scale ratio QR, I uh, can write QR to be equal to AR into VR. AR is LR squared. So QR is LR squared into VR and so on and so forth. I can get any physical quantity if you give me, I can find out the scale ratio of that physical quantity based on Reynolds model law. Now, why am I finding out all these scale ratios? You will understand when you're doing a numerical problem. So, we'll move on to the numerical problems based on Reynolds model law. So, the first question. A pipe of diameter 1.5 meter is used to transport an oil of specific gravity 0.9 and viscosity 3 into 10 raised to minus 2 poise at the rate of 3000 liters per second. Tests were conducted on a 15 centimeter diameter pipe using water at 20 degrees Celsius. So, you can see that the model uh, is a, of this 1.5 meter pipe is a 15 centimeter pipe and uh, in the uh, actual structure they are transporting oil whereas in the model the 15 centimeter diameter pipe is using to transport water. Find the velocity and rate of flow in the model. So, in a 15 centimeter pipe, they are running water instead of a uh, in place of a 1.5 diameter pipe that is used to transport oil. That is the model. You have to find out what would be the velocity in the model and what would be the rate of flow or the discharge in the model. And they have given you the viscosity of water to be 0 0.01 poise. So, what we are going to do is first we are going to write down whatever is given to us. That is the answer. I am going to start with the given details. There is two sets of details given to me, one belonging to the prototype and another belonging to the model. So, the first data is that diameter of the pipe in the prototype is 1.5 meter and the corresponding diameter in the model is 0.15 meter or 15 centimeter. The density of the liquid inside the prototype is 900 kilogram per meter cube. Now, like I told you uh, earlier, the fluid used inside the model is water and so the density uh, of the liquid inside the model is 1000 kilogram per meter cube which is water. The viscosity uh, what is given is 0 0.03 poise. Uh, when you convert poise into SI units I will get 0 0.003 Newton second per meter squared and that is the viscosity of the liquid used in the prototype and the viscosity of the fluid used in the model is given to be 0 0.01 poise that is 0 0.001 Newton second per meter squared, I have converted into SI units. So, uh, these are the details available between the model and the prototype. Another detail that has been given to us is that the discharge in the prototype is 3000 liters per second. I have converted into SI, I have written it as 3 meter cube per second. But we do not have any idea of the discharge inside the model, nor do we know the velocity of flow in the model. So, these two are unknowns to us. And so, these are the data that we have to find out using <coughs> Reynolds model law. Now, how do we proceed with the problem that I will show you now. So, from Reynolds model law, we know that the Reynolds number of the prototype is equal to the Reynolds number of the model. So, if I write the density of the prototype into velocity of the prototype, here I have written into diameter of the prototype. Uh, the Reynolds number was discussed to be rho into v into l divided by mu. Instead of l, I have used diameter here because that is the linear dimension available with me in the question. And as long as I use the linear dimension and the corresponding linear dimension in the model, I can substitute l with d. There is no problem with that. So, I have substituted uh, l as dp, lp as dp and lm as dm. So, rho p vp dp by mu p is equal to rho m vm dm by mu m. So, all the given data, I am going to substitute. 
density of the prototype is 900 velocity of the prototype is uh, unknown to me diameter of the prototype is 1.5 meter uh, viscosity of the prototype is 0 0.003 and similarly in the model density of the model is 1000 diameter of the model is 0.15 viscosity of the fluid in the model is 0 0.001 and I'm going to compare this I will get VP by VM is equal to 0.333 Vp by Vm is nothing but the velocity scale ratio Vr. So, Vr is uh, obtained as 0.333. Now, what they have asked me to find out is the discharge of the model or the rate of flow inside the model and the velocity of the model. So, what I need to do now is I need to know what is the discharge scale ratio Qr. Now we have already found out QR or we have already discussed QR for Reynolds model law in the earlier slide but I don't want you to by heart any of these values. We can find it out from scratch as we are doing the numerical problem on Reynolds model law. So I am going to find it out again. QR is given by AR into VR that is equal to LR squared into VR. So like I told you, do not waste space inside your head trying to by heart any scale ratio corresponding to any model law. All you need to do is, you need to remember the basic which is Reynolds number. The basic of Reynolds model law is that Reynolds number of the prototype is equal to Reynolds number of model also. You need to remember the formula for Reynolds number. If you remember that much, all other scale ratios like discharge scale ratio here, you can find it out from scratch. AR into VR is equal to LR squared into VR. So, um, here, now LR squared into VR. LR is, we know, uh, a linear dimension, scale ratio of a linear dimension. Here we have two linear dimensions which are your diameters. So, LR squared can be easily obtained as LP by LM which is equal to DP by DM. And so, LR is equal to 1.5 divided by 0.15 which is 10. And so, QR would become QP by QM which is equal to DP by DM the whole squared into 0.333 which is the velocity scale ratio that we have discussed. And so, QP by QM would become 1.5 divided by 0.15 the whole squared into 0.333 or QP by QM would become 33.3. Now the discharge in the prototype is known to us to be 3000 liters per second or 3 meter cube per second. So discharge uh, in the model is given by QP divided by 33.3 which is equal to 3 divided by 33.3 or 0 0.09 meter cube per second. If you want to convert it into liters, you can do that. It would become 90 liters per second. That is the discharge through the model. Next, we have to find out the velocity in the model. Now we already know the velocity scale ratio. And we also know the formula for discharge is equal to area into velocity. So the discharge in the prototype is given by pi by 4 dp squared into vp, which is equal to, uh, which implies that velocity in the prototype is 3 divided by pi by 4 into 1.5 squared, which is 1.697 meter per second. Velocity scale ratio is known to us to be uh, vp by vm and it has values. We have obtained the value of vr to be equal to 0.333. And so, velocity in the model is given by Vp by Vr, which is 1.697 divided by 0.333, which is nothing but 5.096 meter per second. And this is how you solve problems using Reynolds model law. Now, we'll do one more problem in Reynolds. The second question. The ratio of the lengths of a submarine and its model is 30 is to 1. The speed of the submarine is 10 meter per second. The model is to be tested in a wind tunnel. Please uh, pay uh, attention to this sentence. The model is to be tested in a wind tunnel. That is the fluid in the model is wind or air. Find the speed of air in the wind tunnel. Also determine the ratio of the resistance between the model and the prototype. When they are talking about ratio of resistance, what they mean is the force ratio. Take the value of kinematic viscosity for seawater and air to be 0 0.012 stokes and 0 0.016 stokes respectively. The density of seawater and air is given as 1030 kilogram per meter cube and 1.24 kilogram per meter cube respectively. So first we will write down whatever data is given to us or whatever data we know. So this is the prototype and the model. A comparison, a lot of data is given on either side. 
the velocity of the prototype is given to be 10 meter per second the corresponding velocity is not given for the model so velocity of the model is unknown the density of the prototype the density of the fluid inside the prototype is seawater and that would be 1030 kilogram per meter cube the similarly in the model the fluid used is air and so the density of the model is 1.24 kilogram per meter cube the next data given is the kinematic viscosity now here i am going to leave it in uh, as 0 0.012 stokes i'm not going to convert it into si units um, the viscosity of the model is 0 0.016 stokes now i'm not going to convert it into si units because anyway i'm going to take the ratio and even if i convert it into si units the conversion factor for uh, kinematic viscosity of prototype and kinematic viscosity of model is going to be the same and they will get cancelled off so uh, i may as well as leave them in the uh, units as they are in 0 0.012 and 0 0.016 respectively now the length scale ratio is given by lp by lm and it is given as 30 and you have to find out the four scale ratio which is fr now you can notice here that i have uh, i've uh, represented my four scale ratio as f subscript capital r now i've not used the usual scale ratio of small r here because f subscript small r stands for fruit number so i don't want to confuse between four scale ratio and fruit number using the same expressions for both so four scale ratio i have represented it as f subscript small r capital r okay from reynolds model law we know that reynolds number of the prototype is equal to reynolds number of the model that is rho p v p l p by mu p is equal to rho m v m l m by mu m now i know that mu by rho is equal to kinematic viscosity nu so i'm going to i'm going to substitute mu p by rho p as nu p and mu m by rho m as nu m respectively so v p l p by nu p is equal to v m l m by nu m now i'm going to substitute with the given uh, sorry i'm going to write v p by v m is unknown to me is equal to nu p by nu m into l m by l p so that is equal to 0 0.012 by 2, uh, 0 0.016 you can remember that i did not convert it into their respective si units Th that is because the si conversion factors into 10 raised to minus 4 so if i had used that conversion factor that would have been common for both the kinematic viscosity of the prototype and the kinematic viscosity of the model and would have got cancelled off so i just did not bother to convert it at all lm by lp is 1 by 30 because as you would remember length scale ratio is prototype divided by model so lm by lp is 1 divided by 30 so i will get the velocity scale ratio to be equal to 0 0.025 so i know the velocity in the prototype as 10 so the velocity of the model can be easily found found out velocity of the model i would obtain as 400 meter per second that is the speed with which uh, the model is moving 400 meter per second now that is not over i have to find out the force to determine the force ratio i am going to start from scratch fr is given by mr into ar so mr is equal to rho r into vr into vr by tr so vr would become lr cube and uh, the acceleration ratio would be vr divided by lr by vr and I will end up getting rho r l r squared into v r squared so you, as you can see i have actually derived the four scale ratio um, at the moment that is i have not by hearted or i have not used any ready-made formula for four scale ratio i know that force is equal to mass into acceleration and using that expression i found out the ratio four scale ratio uh, during the problem itself so that it saves a lot of space in my head and i would be able to un, uh, calculate it at with uh, from scratch and it won't take me much time also um, and so uh, four scale ratio i have obtained as rho r into l r squared into v r squared now rho r is 1030 divided by 1.24 l r is 30 and v r is 0 0.025 and substituting in the formula i will get f r to be equal to 467.27 that is the four scale ratio so i hope you have understood the problems on Reynolds because we are going to move on to fruits model law now fruits model law is used when the gravitational force is the predominant force you would remember that Reynolds model law was used when viscous force was the predominant force acting in the prototype fruits model law is used when gravitational force is the predominant force in the prototype gravitational force or weight is the predominant force acting in the prototype 
So I will get F I P divided by F I M is equal to F G P divided by F G M. That is, I have uh, equated the force ratios of inertia forces and gravitational forces since gravitational forces are the predominant forces. Now I am going to um, rearrange this. And I will get F I P divided by F G P is equal to F I M divided by F G M. I am going to take square root of both sides. So square root of F I P by F G P is equal to square root of F I M divided by F G M. You can see that the left hand side is fruit number of the prototype and right hand side is fruit number of the model. And so fruit number of the prototype is equal to fruit number of model. And hence if we want to model based on the fact that gravitational force is the predominant force, we have to equate the fruit numbers of the prototype and the model and it will take care of the rest. And so this expression FRP is equal to FRM is the fruit model law. Now expanding this further, I know the fruit number is V divided by root of LG. So FRP is VP divided by root of LP into G is equal to, I'm sorry there is a small typo, VM divided by root of LM into G. It's VM not VP. VP by, uh, divided by root of LP into G is equal to VM divided by root of LM into G. And so VP by VM would become square root of LP into G divided by square root of LM into G. Cancelling out the G that is common, I will get VR is equal to square root of LR. Uh, where VR is the velocity scale ratio and LR is the length scale ratio. It's a much simpler expression compared to Reynolds model law. And uh, now we'll check the other scale ratios based on fruit model law. The other scale ratios, time scale ratio TR is LR divided by VR, VR is root LR and so time scale ratio is LR divided by root LR which is equal to root LR. Acceleration scale ratio is VR divided by TR that is equal to v, um, LR, root LR divided by root LR or acceleration scale ratio would become 1. The force scale ratio F uh, subscript capital R is MR into AR. That is MR is density into volume, so rho R into capital VR into AR it would be equal to 1. So you would get force scale ratio to be equal to rho R into LR cube, volume being LR cube. Discharge scale ratio QR would be given by area into velocity, so AR into VR. AR is LR squared and VR is root LR. So discharge scale ratio would become LR raised to 2.5 and so on and so forth. You can find out the scale ratios of any physical quantity based on fruit model law and the basic thing that you should remember is that in fruit model law VR is equal to root LR. So now we'll move on to the numerical problems based on fruits model law. It is going to be much simpler compared to the numerical problems on Reynolds model law because the, uh, the details involved would be much less. So we we'll take a numerical problem. In a 1 in 40 model of a spillway, the velocity and discharge are 2 meter per second and 2.5 meter cube per second. Find the corresponding velocity and discharge in the prototype. That is the question given. So uh, first we will write down what are the data given to us. Here Vm or the velocity in the model is 2 meter per second and Qm which is the discharge in the model is given to be 2.5 meter, meter cube per second. Now they have given that the size of the model is 1 in 40. So what does that make LR? You should remember that LR or length scale ratio is length of the prototype divided by the length of the model. The length of the prototype will always be greater than the length of the model and so even though in the question they have mentioned it as 1 in 40. LR would be 40 is to 1 because LP by LM would be 40 divided by 1. If you take LR as 1 by 40, the whole problem will go wrong. So you should be very careful here. LR is the ratio between the length of the prototype divided by the length of the model. Since the numerator is the length of the prototype, LP by LM would always be a greater value uh, than 1. And so LR would be 40. Now we have to find out the velocity of the prototype and the discharge of the prototype. Again, sorry, there is a typo. We have to find out the discharge in the prototype QP. Now, according to fruit model law, VR is equal to root of LR. Now, we know that VP by VM is equal to root of 40. Based on fruit model law, VR is equal to root LR. We can say that VP by VM is equal to square root of 40. And so 
uh, we know that uh, vm is equal to 2 meter per second it's given in the problem so vp by 2 is equal to 6.324 and hence we will get vp to be equal to 12.648 meter per second in order to find out the discharge in the prototype you have to take discharge scale ratio so qr is equal to ar into vr ar is lr squared vr is root lr so qr would be lr raised to 2.5 and so qp by qm would be equal to 40 raised to 2.5 we already know the discharge in the model to be equal to 2.5 meter cube per second and so qp divided by 2.5 will be equal to 40 raised to 2.5 that is 10119.28 or qp would be equal to 25298.22 meter cube per second and that is the answer for the problem we have found out both the velocity in the prototype and the discharge of the prototype we'll do another this is the next fourth problem. A ship model of scale 1 is to 50 is towed through sea water at a speed of 1 meter per second. So the model, the uh, modeling factor, that is the length scale ratio is mentioned. The speed, it's a model that is being towed. So the speed of the model is given as 1 meter per second. A force of 2 newton is required to tow the model. So the force in the model is given. Determine the speed of the ship and the force on the ship if the prototype is subjected to wave resistance only. Now that last sentence, prototype is subjected to wave resistance only is to explain that uh, gravitational force would be greater than the viscous force acting because usually when we consider ship models or anything that is related to the sea we always think of viscous force and so here they have mentioned explicitly that the prototype is subjected to wave resistance only and so we do not need to bother ourselves with the uh, viscosity of the water and so we will consider fluid model law here the velocity in the model is given as 1 meter per second the force in the model is given as 2 newton lr is given by again the even though in the question it is mentioned as 1 by 50 you should understand that length scale ratio is lp divided by lm which will be 50 by 1 what they've mentioned is actually uh, the scaling down factor of the ship model 1 by 50 but your length scale ratio numerator is length of the prototype divided by, like, by the length of the model. If in fact you took the ratio as 1 by 50, it would mean that the model is 50 times bigger than the prototype. And you would not want that because the ship model is supposed to be smaller than the ship. So the ratio you should use very carefully. The length scale ratio is 50 by 1. Now you want to find out what is the velocity in the prototype as well as what is the force acting on the prototype. So according to fruit model law, Vr is equal to root Lr. We know Vm already. We know Lr. And so we can write P by Vm is equal to square root of 50. We would end up getting Vp by 1 because velocity in the model is given as 1 meter per second. Vp by 1 is equal to 7.071 or Vp is equal to 7.071 meter per second. The first question, the first part of the question is solved. Next. They have asked you for the force acting on the prototype, which means you require the force scale ratio between the model and the prototype. So FR is MR into AR. You can see that I am deriving it over here. MR is density into volume. Acceleration scale ratio. If you want, you can find it out. But I tend to remember that acceleration scale ratio for uh, fruit model law is 1. And so it would be simply rho R into LR cube. So FR is equal to rho R into LR cube. So Fp by Fm is equal to rho r is density of the prototype divided by density of the model. Uh, I can see that the ship model as well as the ship are both tested in the same fluid. And so rho r will be equal to 1. Lr cube would be equal to 50 cube. And hence I will get Fp by 2 is equal to uh, 1,25,000 or Fp is equal to 2,50,000 Newton which is 250 kilo Newton. And with that your question is solved. So, uh, the numerical part of this module is over. Uh, we have to now discuss some theory topics. One of them being the scale effect in models. So, I will discuss scale effect in models. Now, we have studied that when modeling for dynamic similarity, it is difficult to model for all the forces acting on the prototype. Uh, and so, we will model considering the predominant force only. We will only consider the predominant force to model the prototype. But what happens sometimes is that there is a chance that a prototype might have more than one predominant force or the forces that we are neglecting might be uh, large enough that uh, neglecting it would be actually costly on the model. That is that it would actually be detrimental or uh, on the if model uh, accuracy. 
and so there is a chance that there might be more than one predominant force acting on the model so if we model on one predominant force only our model will not give satisfactory results as compared to the actual prototype and so this uh, is known as the scale effect in models that is when we are modeling for one predominant force alone we uh, come across what is known as scale effect in models which occurs because there is more than one predominant force acting on the prototype that is known as scale effect now we'll discuss the classification of models so models are classified into two undistorted models and distorted models now just like the name says undistorted models are those models that are geometrically similar to their prototypes that is they are exactly geometrically completely scaled down and the scale ratio between all the dimensions in the model and the prototype are equal whether it is length breadth or depth they are all scaled down equally by the same factor and uh, that is known as an undistorted model the next one is a distorted model so a model is said to be distorted if it is not geometrically similar to its prototype so we'll uh, try to understand what a distorted model is using a small example if we have a river consider a river of length 100 kilometers width 10 kilometers and depth 10 meter now if we want to scale down and build a model of this river then uh, we are going to scale them down uniformly i'm going to take a scaling factor of 1000 then the length becomes 100 meter the width would become 10 meter but the depth if i scale down by a factor of 1000 would become 1 centimeter so i have a 100 meter 10 100 meter long 10 meter wide model whose water depth is 1 centimeter you can understand that i would not be able to study anything in that model uh, because the depth is so small if i want to study or conduct any tests on the model the depth should be greater than 1 centimeter or at least i should have a reasonable depth to conduct the tests and so uh, what would happen is i would not scale them down uh, scale them down uniformly i'll scale them down differently uh, the depth I would scale them down at a different scale ratio uh, not the same scale ratio as the length and the width and so uh, this makes the model of the river a distorted model because it's not scaled down uniformly on the length breadth and depth now this is what is uh, uh, these are two questions given for self-assessment you can uh, simply go through them uh, um, maybe work them out now one doubt that many students have asked me in the past is how do you understand what model law to apply or how do you understand which is the predominant force to apply the predominant uh, force in the model whether we have to apply fruit model law or Reynolds model law one simple answer is that the answer is there in the question itself in the question if they have mentioned the viscosity then probably you have to use Reynolds model law and in the question if they have not mentioned the viscosity then probably you have to use the uh, fruit model law but again in fruit model law always goes for structures like dams and spillways where the weight is the predominant force and so work out these problems uh, tell me if you're getting the answers um, and uh, thank you for listening to the lecture i hope that you have understood